All right, so last section in this unit, uh, we're kind of returning to one of the things that we saw in the very first section of this unit. And if you remember, in the first section of this unit, we, when we were talking about what a statement was, and then I, I introduced to you what, call, what was called a quantified statement. And a quantified statement was something that started with the word all or some or none. And what we did back then is we talked about negating them. By the way, the first two problems on the test are negating a quantified statement. So make sure that you review that and you're, you're, you're comfortable doing that. I don't want you to miss those points. So the last thing we're going to do here is arguments that involve quantified statements that include the words all and some or n all, some or none. So that's how we are going to round out our section. And when you have an argument that involves all or some or none statements, it's called a syllogistic argument. Again, another fun word to say and to spell. Math people love these fun words. So syllogistic arguments. And so what we're going to use is a tool that a very famous and prolific mathematician from the, I think it was either the 1400s or the 1500s, pretty, pretty amazing. If you take the, 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 uh, other course, if you take 1131, we do something in there called graph theory uh, that, that this dude uh, invented to solve a competition problem and win some prize money. Uh, and he was just a, an amazing mathematician. Lots of fun. Anyway, it's called Euler. I know it looks like Euler, uh, but he was German. So it's Euler. We're going to use a tool called Euler diagrams. It's left to us by a mathematician named uh, Leonard Euler. So before we do any arguments involving this, I'm going to show you the three basic, uh, the three basic ways we can draw our, our Euler circles for this. So I'm going to introduce the quantified statements. So first, we can have a simple statement like this. All dogs are, are brown. So what we're going to do is we are going to use circles to represent that relationship. That I know that's not a true statement. Don't worry about the truth value of the statements. But I want to represent what it says there. All dogs, if I see a dog, it is brown it's it's that color okay so when you see an all statement okay anytime you see the word all at the beginning okay here's what you're going to do you're going to have two circles that you use that are going to be one inside the other now the question is which one goes inside of which i need a circle for dogs i need a circle for brown things which one's going to be the smaller circle? And just make a hypothesis. Remember, if you're wrong, it's an opportunity to learn. Okay, so brown, if I put brown as the small circle, I'm going to do this in pencil, so don't write this down. If I made brown the small circle and then made dogs the bigger circle, what would this part out here of the dog circle represent? Yeah, that would represent white dogs and black dogs and red dogs and all the other color dogs can possibly be. Okay, so because of that, when I have an all statement, what we're going to do here is whatever word comes immediately after the all is going to be the smaller circle. Okay, so all dogs, so every single dog that I can f possibly find is going to be in the circle of brown things. Okay, so now I've got my brown circle. Brown is the bigger circle. Yes, for sure. Does that make sense now that you see it and we've talked about it and we talked about what would have been if we flipped the two circles? Okay, I understand that's difficult to wrap our minds around the first time. That's why I let you know as you're learning this, the pattern is always whatever comes right after the all is always going to be the smaller circle. Okay, well, let's try one. This one's probably a little easier to discern how the circles are going to relate. If I say no dogs are brown, how do you think my two circles are going to relate to each other if no dogs are brown? I'm not going to flip them because uh, if when we, we saw when I had pencil right here, that if I had the brown and I had the dog, there still would be brown dogs, but then there would be, it would imply there was other color dogs. Okay. But if I say no dogs are brown, I'm going to have, this is my dog circle. And I'm going to do my brown things circle. Are they going to touch it all? No. Okay, so my brown things, if no dogs are brown, then the two circles are going to look like this. There is no overlap between the circles. 
And finally, this last one, this last one I think is going to look familiar to us from what we did in our first unit of this course. If I say some dogs are brown, how are the two circles going to relate to each other there? They're going to meet. Yeah, like the intersection when we were talking about sets. So in this case, I've got, I've got my dog circle and then I've got my brown circle. And so this right here, the football, those are the some dogs that are brown. And then just as an aside, something that's related to it, it this out here where I'm pointing, this region, what would that be? Yeah, it would be the some dogs that are not brown. Okay, so the football is the some dogs that are brown, and then out here are the some dogs that are not brown. That would necessarily go along with it. Those are the three basic uh, the three basic Euler diagrams, those are the tools you're going to use as we go through and determine the, val the validity of, of, of these arguments. So here's my first example. Example one says all college courses are fun. This time I, I don't give another like whole category. I just give a specific instance. Uh, MGF 1106, which I should change this number because the state changed the number. I guess I didn't proofread uh, good enough. MGF 1106 is a college course. Therefore, MGF 1106 is fun. I want to know. Here again, just like before, these are my premises. This right here is my conclusion. So what I want to know, the question I want to answer is, is this the only conclusion that I can make from those premises? Well, we're going to see. Give you a second to get caught up to my writing. All right. So all college courses are fun. Well, we just saw this is an all statement okay? in our practice Venn diagram. So I'm going to write one circle inside another. Which one's the smaller circle? Which one's the bigger circle? I'm sorry? Okay, so I'm going to go back up here because the answer was fun would be the small circle. That's okay. This is great. This is, we're, we're gaining clarity. Okay, so all dogs are brown. That meant the dog was the small circle. And what I said is anytime you see an all statement as you're, as you're learning this, whatever comes right after the all is going to be the smaller circle. So sliding back up here, if all college courses are fun, what is going to be the smaller circle? The courses, yeah, or uh, college courses or however you want to label it. And so then the bigger circle is going to be fun things. Now, again, I know it's not necessarily true that all college courses are fun. Don't get distracted by whether one of these statements is true or not. We are just looking at the logic behind it, okay? Uh, so keep that in mind. So now, the next thing is MGF 1106 is a college course. Now, MGF 1106 is not a category. It's just a specific thing. So I'm going to just put a, I'm just going to put a little X where MGF 1106. So if MGF 1106 is a college course, where should I put my little X that represents it? Inside the small circle. So I'm going to put an X right there. I'm going to label it 1106 because I forgot to update the course number on the notes. Bad professor. So now this diagram should always represent your premises. No more drawing. Now what I want to know is does that drawing represent the conclusion. So let's read the conclusion. Therefore, does it have to be true, according to the drawing, does it have to be true that MGF 1106 is fun? Yeah, there is no way that my green X there can be anywhere but inside the fun circle because it has to be in the courses circle and the courses circle has to be in the fun circle. So that right there, because it has to be true, there's no other way to draw it, that is a valid argument or a valid conclusion. All right, will you try the next one? Actually, don't. I'm going to do the next one with you. 
It's an example. I labeled it an example for a reason. So I'm going to follow my instincts on this one. And then, then you have, I think, most of the rest of these to do. Okay, example two. This is probably going to be an example of an invalid argument if I did my notes properly. So I'm going to show you the difference between uh, example one, which was valid, and example two, which is going to probably be invalid. So let's do this. Some nurses work in pediatrics. So some, we saw some is two overlapping circles. So here is my nurse's circle. And then here is my pediatrics circle. So as I read those, where they overlap, that's the, the, the some nurses who work in pediatrics. This part of the circle is nurses who work in other places. And this part of the circle is the some people in pediatrics who are not nurses. So just, just basically interpreting those circles. Okay, so then the next statement says, Lisa works in pediatrics. Okay, so where does Lisa have to be? Lisa has to be in which circle? In the pediatrics, is there any other detail that's given about Lisa? So let me ask you this question. If I put Lisa right here, does that meet the premise? Is Lisa in the pediatrics circle? Yes. Could I put Lisa here? Is Lisa still in the pediatrics circle? Do I know where she belongs though? No, she just, all we're told is that she belongs in the pediatric circle. So here's my question. Do we have to come to the conclusion that Lisa is a nurse? Is that the only conclusion that we can come to? No, she does not have to be a nurse because to be in the pediatric circle, she could be out here. She could be a doctor. She could be whatever else people do in the pediatrics world. I'm not that familiar with it. But the, the point is the premises are not specific enough to make that conclusion. Does that make sense? Okay, all right, so I'm just gonna write that little statement. The premises are not specific enough to warrant that conclusion. And so then what the, we, the conclusion we come to is that argument is invalid. I'm going to give you a moment to catch up to my writing there because that's kind of the key bit of information for this section. Is being able to identify when there's only one conclusion that you can come to or when the drawing would allow you liberty in more than one conclusion. All right, then. Once you're done drawing or writing down that statement, and if you have any questions for me, then please. But what I would like you to do is I'd like you to flip the page and I'd like you to do the next example, example three. All right, so exercise one up at the top of the page says, all ballerinas are athletic. Okay, so it's an all statement. So all statement automatically means I'm going to have one circle that is inside the other circle. So here it is like that. What's going to be the smaller circle? Ballerinas. Yes, that's the category that's right next to the all statement. So if you're a ballerina, 
just going to abbreviate B-A-L-L. If you're a ballerina, then you are in the circle of athletic things. So what that means, according to this statement, okay, again, we're not disputing whether it's a true statement or a false statement. We're just going with it. That means, according to this statement, outside here are other things that are athletic. But if you're a ballerina, you're in there. You're athletic. So far, are we so good? Okay, again, this is another example with a specific object. Russell is athletic. So that means, again, I know I'm stating the obvious. I'm going to have you state it. That means what circle does Russell have to be in? Athletic. Are we given any further detail about Russell? So if I put Russell here, is Russell in the athletic circle? If I put Russell here, is Russell in the athletic circle? Russell could be anywhere, right? So do I have to come to this conclusion? Does Russell have to be a ballerina? No, Russell could be, okay? But we're not told. Again, the premises do not give us enough information to come to that conclusion, and that's why this is an invalid argument. Question about that? I know it's sometimes difficult to wrap our minds around why that why that's invalid. So if you need anything cleared up, please let me know. If you're feeling okay, let's turn our attention to exercise two. It's another one like this. We are given a specific member of one of the categories. All right, let's see how you did. Let's see if you got any questions for me. So again, the first statement is all Call of Duty players are students. So it's an all statement. So I need one circle that's going to be inside another circle. Which one's the smaller one? The Call of Duty players. So I'm just going to C-O-D, Call of Duty. And all Call of Duty players are students. So students, larger circle. Okay, next statement. Joel... Joel plays Call of Duty. So again, I know this is seemingly obvious. What circle does Joel have to be in? Call of Duty. So when I put Joel has to be there. So does that mean can Joel be out here? Like where my pen point is, I'm not going to make an X. Can Joel be out here? No, because we are told Joel plays Call of Duty. If I put the X out here where the pen is, that would be outside the Call of Duty. So then here's my question. Does that mean, according to these premises, does Joel have to be a student? Yes, there's no other option because, because Joel can be anywhere in the Call of Duty circle, but he can't be outside of it. So can't be can't be outside of the student circle then. So that is a valid conclusion according to those premises. All right, so that's what you do when you're given a specific element inside one of the circles. Okay, that's how you make your judgment. The other type of syllogistic argument is if both premises are, uh, are quantified statements. Okay, so notice in the... The pattern what we've been given is that the first statement's been a quantified statement. The second one has been a specific element. Okay, quantified statement specific element. Now, example three, my next example. I've got all people, all earth people, I don't know why I typed that, but all people have two arms. So let me draw two circles. Here's a circle for people. And then here's a 
circle for things with two arms. And I didn't ask you, but I, uh, I just, I made the assumption we're going to put the people as the smaller circle because it's all people. People is the very first thing after the all. You with me so far? We track it. Okay. The next statement's another quantified statement. All people with two arms can fly. So everything, anything with two arms can fly. So I need another circle. I need a fly circle, things that can fly. Where am I going to put the fly circle? What's going to be the smaller circle? Okay, I typed this poorly. Let's do this. All This is my intent. As I'm reading it, as we're doing the problem, I'm realizing I typed it poorly. What I was meaning to communicate here is all things with two arms can fly. Okay. I, the, the word people there was distracting. So all things with two arms can fly. So I've got my all people have two arms. I've got my people circle. I've got my things with two arms circle. Okay, now I need a third circle. I need things that can fly. So if all things with two arms can fly, where's the fly circle going to go now? Maybe that's a little clearer. Which one's going to be the smaller circle, the fly circle or the two arms circle? Yeah, all things with two arms. So everything that comes right after the all, all things with two arms, that's going to be the smaller circle. So I'm going to put the fly, things that can fly circle around that. My apologies for typing that poorly. I hope I didn't totally uh, confuse you on that. Or hopefully if I did, that if it feels a little better now. So now what I want to know is now that I have all people have two arms, so I've got people and then I've got two arm things around that, and then all things with two arms can fly, so now I've got the fly circle around all of it, do I have to come to this conclusion? All people can fly. Do I have to say all people can fly? Is that the only conclusion I can come to? Yes or no? Yeah, here's the people circle. Where's the people circle in relation to the flying circle? Inside of it. It can't be anywhere but inside of it because the people have to be inside the two-arm circle and that has to be inside the flying circle. So that means the people have to be inside the flying circle. So that is a valid argument. All right, well... Try the next one. It's I've read it while we were doing that problem. The next one's worded fine. Uh, so if there's any confusion, it'll be on the concept and we can talk about that. All right, so the first statement is all dolphins are mammals. So it's an all statement. So I need one circle inside of the other circle. Which one's the smaller one? Dolphins, yes, great job. All dolphins are mammals. So I'm using D for dolphin, M for mammals. I don't think we'll get confused because the next one starts with a V. So all dolphins are mammals, great. All mammals are vertebrates. So now I need a circle for vertebrates. 
Where is it going to go? Why did you say outside the mammals? You're 100% correct. Mammals would have to be the smaller circle in comparison to the vertebrates circle. And so I'm going to put that around it. Perfect. Well done. You track it with me? We're going to do some more, okay, uh, just to make sure we're getting our circles right. But now, do I have to come to this conclusion? According to this diagram, are all dolphins vertebrates? Yeah. The D circle, the dolphin circle, has to be inside the V circle. There's no other way to draw the picture. So again, that is a valid argument. Well, let's flip the page. So please give this a try. Do your best. We're learning here. See how it goes. All right, so the first statement is some caterpillars have fur, so it's a sum statement. So some statements have two overlapping circles. So here is my first one. I'm going to call that caterpillar, so I'm going to abbreviate that CP for caterpillar. And then the other circle is things with fur. Okay, so far so good. The next statement is all things with fur are mammals. So I now I need a mammals circle. How is the mammal circle going to relate to the uh, things with fur circle? Well said. It's all things with fur. So that means the fur circle is going to be the smaller one. And so my mammal circle is going to go around it. So here we go. My mammal circle goes around the things with fur. I go outside the box. That's okay. So now let's look at the conclusion. According to that drawing, do some caterpillars, or excuse me, are some caterpillars mammals according to the drawing? Yeah, because there's no way that the mammal circle can't intersect with the caterpillar circle. So because of that, that is a valid conclusion. Okay. That drawing that we made for the two premises aligns with that conclusion, and there's no way that it can't. We'll try the next one, exercise five.
Okay, so the first statement says all freshmen live on campus. So it's an all statement. So we've got one circle inside the other. So here's my freshman circle, and then here's my campus circle. Okay, all freshmen live on campus. So now the next statement is no people who live on campus can own cars. So the cars circle. How is the cars circle going to relate to the people who live on campus, the campus circle? They're not going to touch, right? So I'm just going to draw a circle right here for cars. Does everyone understand why that one doesn't touch? It can't touch the campus circle. So then, just before we read the conclusion, if the cars circle can't touch the campus circle, is there any possible way that the cars circle can touch the freshman circle? No, because it's inside. So let's look at this conclusion. Therefore, does it have to be true that no freshman can own cars? Is that is that a valid conclusion? Yeah, that's what the diagram says. There's no way to draw the diagram differently. So again, that's valid. So just to spoil the surprise, okay, the last two are invalid arguments, okay? So some uh, so I just want you to give it a try. Exercise six again. If you get it wrong, that means you're learning. It's okay. We'll figure it out, and you'll ask questions. Okay, so exercise six, the first statement, all marigolds are annuals. Okay, so it's an all statement. We've seen a whole bunch of all statements. So here is my marigold. I'm going to use M and our annuals. I'm going to use A. All mar marigolds are annuals. Everybody good so far? Are we able to draw our all statements pretty accurately? Okay, so here's statement two. Some tulips are annuals. Okay, so when I draw my tulip circle, what is the only thing that that statement speaks to? The tulip circle has to do what? It has to intersect the annual circle, yes. Does that statement say anything about marigolds? No, don't, so don't assume. Only draw what the statement tells you. And this statement says some tulips are annuals. So that means when I draw my tulips, I'm gonna use a T for tulips, some tulips are annuals. Now, could I have drawn the tulip circle to intersect the marigold? Yeah, but the statement doesn't tell me that I should. Okay, so if I can avoid it, I do. I'm not, I'm, I don't want to bring any more detail into the problem. So do I have to come to the conclusion? And that's the, that's the point here. Do I have to come to this conclusion that some tulips are marigolds? No, the way I've drawn it, you wouldn't come to that conclusion. Okay, so this is an invalid argument. And again, it speaks to the same thing we saw on the first page. If there's more than one way you could draw the drawing, that's what's going to cause it to be an invalid argument. Okay, I could draw the tulips to intersect the marigolds, but I don't have to. So there's options. That's why it's invalid. More than one conclusion would be possible. You with me on why that one's invalid? Okay, well, it's going to be a very similar thing on exercise seven, the last one. So give it a try uh, and we'll... Talk about the result.
All right, so the first statement is an all statement. All poets appreciate language. So I've got smaller circle inside my larger circle. So this is my poets is the smaller and those who appreciate language. So I'm just gonna put language right here. Uh, so all poets are people who appreciate language. Okay, so, so far so good. Now the next one says, all writers appreciate language. So where's the writer's circle going to go according to this statement? The writer's circle is going to go where? In the language circle. Again, just like the previous problem, does this statement say anything about the poets? It does not. So I'm not going to assume. So that means I'm just going to put the writers right here. Now, could they intersect? Could the writers be in the poets? Yeah, all that's possible. And so it's that uncertainty that causes us to say, what's the conclusion? Do all poets, are all poets writers? No, not even some poets are writers. That would also be an invalid conclusion. So invalid. Well done. 